Today we are going to talk about that how insulin activates its receptors, I mean insulin receptors, how they are activated and how insulin receptors do intracellular signaling. What kind of intracellular molecular pathways are activated by the activation of the insulin receptors. Before we really go into detail of how the insulin receptors work, just a little bit general concept about insulin. Already we have a series of lectures previously recorded about insulin synthesis and secretion, right? But a little bit review that insulin is a very important hormone in our body. Uh, if we have to say one word about insulin action, that should be that insulin is a very powerful anabolic hormone. Insulin is very powerful what kind of hormone? Anabolic hormone. Right? Insulin is released in our body. Insulin levels in the blood go up when we are rich. We are rich in glucose, amino acids, fatty acids. Right? When in our body there is abundance of nutrients when our body is rich in nutrients, then insulin come into action, right? What it is going to do? Insulin is going to enhance the utilization of nutrients, right? And storage of nutrients. And insulin is going to lead to synthetic functions, synthetic functions in our body and even growth function, cellular growth and differentiation functions, right? Again, I will repeat, insulin is a very powerful anabolic hormone. What I mean by anabolic hormone, that it is going to enhance the anabolic activity in our body and suppress the catabolic activity in our body, in our metabolism. And generally speaking, insulin stimulates the anabolic pathways and inhibits the catabolic pathways. So the final result is that insulin leads to synthetic functions. It will increase the synthesis of glycogen, proteins, lipids, synthetic functions. And insulin also work as, as cell growth functions. Is that right? Synthetic and growth. These are the two major. So, let's suppose that you have taken carbohydrate rich meal. You have taken carbohydrate rich meal or very decent meal. So, naturally from GIT, you will be absorbing glucose. And if you have eaten protein, then there must be amino acids. And then there may be fatty acids or other lipid components. Now, this glucose, which is being absorbed into circulation, amino acids and lipids and their derivatives, components, after the meal, our blood becomes rich in body fuels. Because glucose is a fuel. Amino acid is also basic component. Right? It can be used as subcomponent to later on making proteins. Even lipids which are absorbed, they can be used as a fuel or they can be stored for the future needs. So what happens? That when you have taken the food, right, you become rich. Rich in nutrients. Now, these nutrients will, yes, these nutrients will lead to the release of most powerful anabolic hormone. Because it's very logical. You are eating, you are bringing the nutrients, you are rich in fuels. Now you should have some hormone which uses this fuel molecules. You should have some hormone in blood, yes, which will use these nutrients. Right? Now, for this purpose, from the pancreas, from the pancreas, as you know, pancreas is having exocrine functions and endocrine functions. In the pancreas, for exocrine functions, there are SNI, right, which produce different kind of enzymes. And 
For endocrine functions, there are islets of Langerhans. Your pancreas may have one million, more than one million islets of Langerhans. Islet of Langerhans are collection of special endocrine cells. cells. Right? Let me make one islet of Langerhans and light. Right? Now, there is a network of capillary in the islets of Langerhans. There is a network of capillary and there are very specialized cells around those capillary networks releasing certain hormones. Now, what kind of cells are present in islet of Langerhans? They are alpha cells, they are beta cells, they are delta cells and they are PP cells, right? Especially first three are most important. Now, all these cells are present in the islet of Langerhans and they are arranged in a very specific way within the islet. They are clustered in a very special arrangement. How come? Beta cells, like beautiful ladies, they are aggregated in the center. Beta cells are aggregated in the islet of Langerhans. Let's suppose this is the islet of Langerhans, right? Beta cells, like beautiful ladies, they are collected in the center of islet right and alpha cells yes alpha cells like alpha males alpha males what are alpha males dominating males right uh, alpha cells like alpha males they are surrounding these ladies not very good anyway so these are alpha cells so beta cells should be in the like beautiful ladies are in the center surrounded by alpha cells, right? So alpha cells are on the periphery. And then there are delta cells. Yes, delta cells. Where are they? In the center or periphery? Yes, my friend. Delta cells are like dogs. And dogs are everywhere. So there may be delta cell in the center or they may be in the periphery. And then there are some very small uh, number of PP cell, right? PP cells basically release pancreatic peptide. We will not talk about that. Let's concentrate about alpha cells, which normally release, yes, glucagon. And beta cells, which normally release or mainly release insulin. And with that, small amount of another peptide amylin right and delta cells mainly release somato matostatin right now we will focus on this thing that you have taken the meal and you are absorbing a very high amount of nutrients right and these nutrients will reach to pancreas in the pancreas right they will stimulate the beta cell of pancreas right beta cell of pancreas it is specially sensitive to glucose beta cell of pancreas can be called glucose sensors they can sense the glucose what beta cells of pancreas are doing i will repeat it very briefly Okay, no, I have discussed this in the previous lecture. Forget about it. Just trust me, when glucose level in the blood goes up, glucose will enter into beta cells of pancreas. Their glucose convert into, yes, glucose will go into glycolytic pathway, Krebs cycle, and produce more and more ATP. So, when blood glucose level is going up, higher amount of glucose is entering into beta cell, and beta and glucose which is entering into beta cell is converting into leading to leading to elevated level of ATP. ATP okay let me tell you briefly this is the beta cell and here are glucose transporters in the beta cells right there are gl glucose transporters in the beta cell remember glucose transporters in the membrane of the beta cell are independent of insulin presence or absence 
आई मीन ग्लूकोज अपटेक बाय द बेटा सेल द पैक्रिया इज नॉट इंसुलिन डिपेंडेंट राइट एक्चुअली ग्लूकोज अब्जॉर्बशन फ्रॉम द जी आई टी म्यूकोजा इज ऑल्सो इंसुलिन इंडिपेंडेंट राइट वेन यू ईट द ग्लूको कार्बोहाइड्रेट राइट ग्लूकोज अब्जॉर्ब फ्रॉम जी आई टी बाय दो ग्लूकोज ट्रांसपोर्ट मैकेनिजम विच आर इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ इंसुलिन इन द सेम वे वेन ग्लूकोज रिच इज बेटा इन द पैंक्रियाज इट ऑब्जॉर्ब इट ऑब्जॉर्ब इन टू येस वॉट इज इट बेटा सेल ऑफ पैंक्रियाज राइट एंड दिस ग्लूकोज इज एंट्रिंग इन टू बेटा सेल ऑफ पैंक्रियाज राइट थ्रू ग्लूकोज ट्रांसपोर्टर्स विच आर नॉट सेंसिटिव टू प्रेजेंस और एबसेंस ऑफ इंसुलिन वंस दिस ग्लूकोज इज इन right as you know it will go through metabolic pathways and eventually this will result into increase level of atp right let's suppose this is atp molecule now what atp molecule is going to do here okay these were which transporters glucose in these cells there are special potassium channels right as more and more glucose is coming into blood more and more glucose is entering into beta cell more and more atp is being produced in beta cell of pancreas and more and more glucose atp molecules will love to bind with what is this potassium channels and block them so you see glucose is entering here and we will see it will lead to the secretion of release of insulin from these cells what are the steps in between glucose enters atp level in the cell goes up atp blocks special potassium channels when potassium movement blocks here cell membrane become partially depolarized cell membrane become depolarized then when beta cell membrane become partially depolarized depolarization sensitive calcium channels open which channels open and as you know calcium is more extracellular so calcium will move from outside to inside when intracellular calcium levels will go up when intracellular calcium levels will go up this calcium will lead to exocytosis of granules loaded with insulin and c peptide and other component in these granules what will happen this calcium will will activate the molecular motors those molecular motors will pull these vesicles insulin loaded vesicle and bring them to the membrane and these vesicles will fuse with the membrane and insulin will be released so what did we learn recap very rapidly you told you took carbohydrate rich meal lot of nutrients are absorbing into circulation what logically should happen logically somehow in our body those hormone which are going to deal with the nutrients to use the nutrient to absorb the nutrients to store the nutrients right those hormones should go up classical hormone here is insulin so glucose and other nutrients will stimulate the beta cell of pancreas for example glucose enters in yes atp level intracellularly goes up atp plugs the potassium channels membrane becomes somewhat depolarized and depolarization sensitive or voltage sensitive calcium, calcium influx occur which will lead to exocytosis of exocytosis of insulin loaded granules and now in our blood what will happen insulin level will go up now insulin is into action all right now insulin so we now what is happening we have lot of nutrients in the blood and we have now lot of insulin now this insulin we will see how to how it deals with these nutrients and 
settle these nutrients appropriately into the body cells, especially in liver, muscles, and adipose tissues. Right? Now we have to see how insulin forces the, how it works on the, yes, hepatocytes and on the muscle cells, skeletal muscles. To be more accurate, striated muscles because insulin receptors are present on the skeletal muscle as well as on the myocardial muscles. So now we have to see nutrients are there. Insulin is also there now. How insulin is going to modify the function of hepatocytes, skeletal muscle cells, myocardial muscle cells and functions of adipocytes so that these nutrients are more readily taken up, utilized and stored. That's the whole purpose. Right? So let's talk about it. We make a hypothetical cell here to which insulin is going to work. Right? That basic primary targets of protein, sorry, insulin, primary target tissue of the insulin are mainly, insulin acts on many tissues, but at your level, you must know at least three basic tissues on which insulin loves to produce its action to deal with nutrients, use, usage and storage. What are those tissues, right? I will draw it here. As you know, that must be liver, that must be striated muscles, right? Skeletal muscle and myocardial and there must be adipocytes, lipocytes, right? Now, insulin will act on these three tissues mainly so that nutrients can be settled, right? Of course, insulin will work on the cells, on the hepatocytes or muscle cells or lipid cells, right? I will draw here one hypothetical cell right and show how insulin work let's suppose this is my hypothetical cell of course its cell membrane is made of lipid bilayer <laughs> right now insulin has to produce action in which part of the cell Insulin, to deal with these nutrients, it has to produce actions in which part of the cell? Insulin produces some actions in the cytosol or in the nucleus. Which component? Yes, please. Insulin has to produce, to deal with these nutrients. We are going logically, right? Insulin has to somehow manage these nutrients. Now, to manage these nutrients, insulin has to work on the cytoplasm or on the nucleus? Cytoplasm. cytoplasm. What do you think, my friend? Uh, for short term effects on cytoplasm and for long term on nucleus. Wow, he impressed me. He says that insulin will work on the cytoplasm as well as on the nucleus. Very right. Why? Because insulin has to change the metabolic pathways. If insulin has to change the metabolic pathways while dealing these nutrients, insulin should produce some action on the membranes so that nutrients should go in, some action on the enzymes so metabolic, anabolic activities should be stimulated and catabolic activities should be inhibited and insulin should also work on the nucleus so that enzymes which are desired, their synthesis should be increased and enzymes which are not required like catabolic enzyme for example, so those enzymes should uh, pro uh, production should be suppressed. Even as I told you insulin is responsible for cell growth, proliferation, differentiation, these functions, for these function insulin need an action to the nucleus.
So what did we learn right now? We learned this thing that when so much nutrients are coming and insulin is coming, now insulin has to act, produce effect. Insulin has to produce effects on the membranes so that nutrients should enter in. Insulin has to act on the enzymatic pathways, metabolic pathways. Already existing enzymes alter in such a way that anabolic pathways should be stimulated, catabolic pathways should be inhibited and insulin also has to act on the nucleus uh, to be more accurately it has to act on DNA to RNA process means transcription and RNA to protein synthesis process that is translation. So not only why because as I told you this is an anabolic hormone so many nutrients are coming when body is so rich in so many fuels not only it will energize the cell in anabolic pathways cells which are so rich in nutrients they will love to proliferate they will love to differentiate they will love to grow and all these functions we need to enter interact with the genes so again insulin should produce here is the insulin now here is the insulin right okay this is uh, like a crown right okay here is the insulin now insulin is here and this insulin want to alter the membranes permeability to nutrients it has to alter the metabolic pathways by altering the action of the existing enzymes and it has to affect the nuclear functions but the problem is there problem is there that insulin cannot enter into cell the problem is there insulin is not allowed to enter into cell why it is not allowed to enter into cell yes because it's criminal person or what why insulin is not allowed to enter into cell yes because it is peptide it's a molecule which is big it is big enough that it cannot diffuse through lipid membranes it is protein Insulin is 51 amino acid containing protein. Is that right? It's a peptide. Actually, insulin has, let me make it, two chains. Chain A and chain B. And they are held by disulfide bond. This insulin molecule, this is a chain of amino acids. A chain and B chain is held together by disulfide bond. Now this is insulin molecule, there are a so, lot of amino acids, 51 amino acids into insulin mo molecule. Amino acids, many of these amino acids are highly charged. If these amino acids are charged, it means insulin molecule is polar. If insulin molecule is big and polar, can it dissolve into membranes? No. no. So it is like a messenger which come to your home but is not allowed to enter into home. It has to bring changes inside the home, but not allowed to enter into home. Now, this is the issue. Insulin love to change the membrane properties, permeability to certain nutrients, want to change the action of metabolic enzymes, and want to change the transcription and translation. So, action in the membrane, in the cytosol, and the nuclear machinery. But problem is that insulin cannot enter into cells. If in insulin cannot enter into cell, then there should be something here. There should be something here to which insulin can talk, do some action inside. That something here is insulin receptors. As insulin cannot enter into cell, so insulin responsive cells should have some molecule in the membrane, right? Special molecular macromolecules to which insulin can bind and ask those molecules to produce intracellular signaling to get the desired result. Now those molecules which are expressed on most cells in the body, right, and especially abundantly on the liver cells, muscle cells, striated muscle cells and adipose, adipose tissue. Those molecules are basically insulin receptors. What are they? 
they are insulin receptors right now let's talk about the structure of insulin receptor what is the basic structure of insulin receptor and how insulin receptors are activated and after the activation how these how these receptors give intracellular signaling 